watching your mum. You're going to have to get up, my filly. You're going to have to get up. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Let me see. Where is she going? Right, say hello. The real star of the show. Hi, good boy. Did you say hi to him? Oh, thank you. Oh, that's, that's so kind. Thank you. Yes. You going to sit down now? Yeah. Go, you sit down. Get comfy, go. Hi everybody, welcome back to Lally Bee Knits. My name is Natalie and I'm recording from Belfast, which has got a little bit sunnier in the last half hour, so that's nice. Um, thanks for coming back. The first video has taken off a little bit, that's exciting to see. Um, the editor-in-chief is very excited about the numbers, he keeps texting me, look how many he's watching. So that's a bit crazy, that's a bit crazy. Um, but hello, um, not a huge amount of knitting from me this week, um, socks mostly, but it was my birthday, I'm wearing my birthday jumper, this is the Spring Sorrel in um, Pixie Yarns, uh, DK and the colour is Paper Flowers, so I knit this for my birthday and I just alternated two skeins. Um, but the yarn pulls anyway, so I love it. I think the fact that it's pearl bumps on this side means that you get away with pulling. It kind of looks intentional. Um, so yes, it was my birthday on Monday. I've been off work all week, which has been lovely. Although I feel like I could do with another wee week off. And you know when you have a week off and you feel like, I'm gonna knit so much, all I'm gonna do is knit, I'll have jumpers done, I'll make so much progress. Well, I didn't do any of that. I did not. <laughs> didn't work out that way. Um, and it just, that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I have a few little bits and pieces. I've had a day of it already today. It's Friday, I'm recording, and um, I had to do battle with a giant spider in my house. I was sitting on FaceTime with my sister, Chloe, just out of the corner of my eye, I saw this monster shadow descend. So that was stressful. I had to deal with that. I've already been told off by my friend for dealing with it in a violent way rather than a humane way. But I've already been told off for that. So I'm not accepting any more criticism on the kind of spiders. I'm sorry. <laughs> not where I wanted to go with this. Anyway, it's been a day. I'm a wee bit, I'm still a wee bit jittery from, from that. I do have a real phobia of them. Um, right, so that, that started me off. So after I record this, I'm going to go get myself a nice coffee, um, maybe treat myself to some lunch and sit in a cafe with a book for an hour or two and just chill out because that was scary this morning. <laughs> but yes, so I have... A finished object to show you which I'm excited about and I have a new cast on two new cast ons and everything here is socks so I shall get into it um, and then I'll do a little bit about what I got for my birthday little bits and bobs that I picked up um, and the little bag I made and um, so yeah anyway first finished object are my Hermione socks so these last week, um, Anna is a little stitch marker, a progress keeper I got for my birthday from Twill and Print, um, Botanica Yarn stocks those. Oh, you see the colours there, that's a bit weirdly angled. Um, Botanical Yarn stocks these, they're my favourites. I really love them. Um, oh, I actually, yeah, I have another one that I'll, grab later on and show you but very cute so I finished my Hermione socks I was talking about these last week I think the only reason I finished them is because I knit them both at the same time on two sets of needles um so it was motivating to kind of get to the end of it um this is a free pattern talked about it in more detail last week it's a sock set from Giddy Ant Yarns 
there's the little label. This one's called Fly Away and it's part of their Curiosity yarn clip. Um, so you can't get this yarn anymore. Unless you ask them very nicely if they'll redo them, but I don't think they do. Um, it was a 50 gram main colour and a 20 gram mini. And I this is what I have left. So I think, uh, including the cuff, these are six inches long. I think I could have knit the leg a wee bit longer and still had plenty. Um, it's about 10 grams here altogether, so I think that'll go into my crochet blanket. But these are my first autumnal socks. I think the colour is autumnal enough to enter into the cal that I was talking the falling leaves cal I was talking about last week that Earth Tongue Girl is running, so it seems like an autumnal colour to me. It's given me that vibe. Hopefully I can enter those. Um so yeah, haven't haven't sewn in any ends. In fact, I forgot to catch another the toe, so I did it really quickly before I started filming. Um, but that still counts. So nice, nice, easy, repetitive pattern. My foot size is, I think my foot length is what, a UK five. Um, so you. Yeah, I can get a full pair of socks with a little bit of leftover from a half sock set, which is very handy. Um, so that is my, let me turn my phone on Do Not Disturb because that's ridiculous not lip. So that's my first and only finished object. Now I do have a hoe. And if you don't know what a hoe is, a hoe is a half object. So if you're knitting gloves or socks and you finish one of them, it's a hoe. This is also um, a test knit that I have been, I was selected to do this little test knit and I have never done a test knit before. Um, so I'm very excited about it. I used to be a proofreader, so maybe they're getting a little bit more than they bargained for with my pattern notes. But anyway, hopefully she's happy with them. I'll send them off soon. These are the Sylvie Shorties. Um, by my cup of knitting on Instagram. Now I think my deadline for these to be tested is the start of October. So hopefully they'll come out shortly after that. These are knit in DK. I've knit my pair in another pixie yarn colorway. There's my messy cake. Let me find the colorway for you. This is Busy Bee. That I got in the summer. It's been sitting in my stash. Look at the lovely speckles. It's a very summery skin. So it's not quite autumnal, but um, um, it's a merino 75 nylon 25. And this is the first pair of DK socks that I've ever knit. I'll show you them again. They've got a little lace detail here. Very easy. A little cable. There's a short row heel with instructions in the pattern. It's a very nicely written pattern. But I've never knit a DK sock before. So it, this was interesting. It did work out quickly, but I find that knitting DK at this gauge hurt my hands a lot more than knitting fingering weight socks. <laughs> it looks so small, but it is the same size as one of these. But yeah, it hurt my hands a wee bit more. I think maybe I can go up a needle size. Maybe I'm holding it a little too tight. But then you worry that if you don't hold your sock knitting, if your gauge isn't tight enough on your socks, they'll wear through quicker. So you're supposed to have a nice tight gauge anyway. But these are very cute. I'm going to knit another pair in an autumnal yarn um, that I bought this week that I'll show. Very cute, silvery socks. Keep an eye out. I'll put them on my Instagram as well whenever the pattern's released. Um, but I'm delighted to be test knitting. My first test knit. And actually I haven't done a German short row heel either. So that was quite successful I think. Very cute. Very quick knit. Um, so those are my socks. That's my finished object and my half object. And then I have one more sock left to show you. Now this is in a little Halloween bag that my sister and I made. My sister came over last Saturday. We had a little Halloween 
It was supposed to be a knitting day, turned into a sewing day because I'm so slow <laughs> at sewing that it really did take all day. But we made these cute little Halloween bags and it's got little ghosts on the inside with pockets. So this pattern, I've been saying that I'll mention the pattern for so long and I keep forgetting. This is by Can Do Crafts, um, who sells her patterns on Etsy. And it's a really good beginner friendly sewing pattern because I, as I said before, not a very good seamstress sewer, um, sewist. So I need something that has pictures that tells me exactly where I'm supposed to sew, how I'm supposed to do it, what way it's constructed, and this pattern does everything. So I got cute little Halloween-y um, fabrics. I love the ghosts. They're so cute. In it is my botanical yarn sock set that I showed last week. And I knit up um, a spectacular sock by This Handmade Life. Oh. No, this is not blocked. And I had a little bit of trouble with my colourwork knitting. So I've knit colourwork jumpers before and my gauge is quite, is becoming more even the more I do it. But because I think I had a shorter amount of stitches to work across, I do magic loop. So I had a shorter amount of stitches to work across. So my gauge went a wee bit off. I think you can see a little bit of this row. It's just a bit higgledy pickledy. Now these are unblocked so when they block I'm hoping they'll sharpen up a little bit but I knit this part in a 2.25 millimeter needle and then I swapped to a 2.5 and I made sure that my stitches were far apart and that I was knitting them kind of loosely. I think my bit was too loose because then I lose some of the definition. But I haven't put my heel on yet. My heel's going to go here, so they're going to be little shorties. And I did, I think, two and a half pattern repeats for my length of tote. But I love. I think this would be a beautiful jumper. A really nice colour work jumper. I love um, Botanical Yarns colour scents. I think we have very similar tastes in colour, which is not good for my back balance. <laughs> but it is good for finding something that just speaks to you and this is lovely. I really like this sock. So I worked up one. My <laughs> I did so usually when I knit socks I do the weave in Stephen method where you weave your little end in as you knit. I did not do that for this one because I was concerned that the weave in might make it a bit tight. So those are my floats and my ends <laughs> behold the mess that I have. <laughs> I used to crochet blankets and the ends were all like this so I am used to dealing with a lot of ends but that will take a wee while to sew back in. But my floats look pretty even. I want it to stretch as much as I can because my little chunky foot has to fit in there, you know. So um, that's my spectacular sock. I love it. I th I'm already thinking of different yarns that I can pair this with. And I didn't use very, m like, not very much was used to knit that. So I'll definitely get a couple more pairs of socks out of this mini set. Because the minis all add up to 100. And then this grey was a 50 gram skein. That's a Coop Knits one that I showed last week. So yeah, my plan is to finish this for next time. But I really, colour work is so addictive whenever you start working on it. Um, nice. And the little progress keeper is from a Gideon's um, advent a couple of years ago. Very cute. So that's all my knitting. It's not very much. I did knit on my um, What the Fade. I'm still in my brioche. Those brioche repeats are long. They're long. So I think I have three more repeats of the brioche to do before I'm into my stock of it. And I was trying to rush it 
And then I thought, what, why are you rushing it? Man, you could just knit socks. So that's what I did. So that's still on the go. I haven't touched my Alpen Glow. Um, and I have a project that I want to talk about in my plans, but I'll move on to my little acquisition section before I talk about my knitting plans for the next couple of weeks. Uh, first thing to say, um, as my sister Sophie would say, listen to this. <laughs> when I went last weekend, before Chloe came round for our knitting spooky day, um, I had placed an order with Kitty Ants, so I selected to pick it up so that I didn't have to risk putting it into Royal Mail when they were having their strikes, whatever. So I selected to pick it up from their um, studio and I popped the address into Google Maps and Neil and I set off and we think we're going to get coffee after this, it's going to be so great and I drive to the address and the instructions said we're in the place behind the bungalow. So I pull up and there's a bungalow and it's a very awkward parking situation and I'm like oh Neil this is very tight, um, it looks like it's someone's driveway. But pull in anyway, and there's a sign on the window that said, points towards somebody's studio to go around the back. So I thought, oh, there must, there must be studios on this site. It just looks homely. And there was also like a, like a menu for a cafe in the window. So I thought, okay, it's just cosy, but we'll nip around the back here. So Neil and I are around the back and I'm going, Neil, this is this feels like somebody's garden and he's like yeah well they said to look out for this specific thing so we'll look down here so we're traipsing into what turns out to be some stranger's garden and i'm like neil i really don't think there's anything more back here so we turn back to see a woman standing at her back door looking at us wondering why there are two strangers walking through her garden so she opens the door and I'm like, I am so sorry that we are in your garden. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> We're looking for guinea ants. Are they here? And she's like, no, this is my garden. This is my house. Oh. Oops. <laughs> so it turns out there are two of the same address within the, like a 10 minute space. Um... So yeah, we were traipsing around some woman's garden looking for yarn that wasn't there. And she was very nice to us, but mortified. Mortified for walking around this wee woman's garden. And she's like, no, this is my garden. What are you doing? Must have scared the life out of her. So anyway, we get back in the car, make our awkward way out of the driveway, and then realise that we're coming from the opposite direction and find eventually... <laughs> studio. Uh -huh. um, that is a very Natalie story that happens to us a lot. But anyway, all that to say, I did get my goodies once I got there. So I will show you my goodies that I got. Um, this first one was the last on the website because I went back to look to order for my sister and it was sold out. So sorry about that. Um, but this is called Spellbound. And it's got gold glitter in it, which is gorgeous. And my colour's a bit spooky. So I love this. This is a 100 gram skin. So I'm going to split the main colour into two and give one to my sister. So she can knit some matching socks. Look at the, let me pull it off and show you like properly. <gasps> love the purple, obviously. But look at that little speckle of black <gasps> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well worth creeping through some woman's garden in an attempt to find this <laughs> and the little mini is sparkly too perfect orange to go with it so thank god it's good glitter in it because that made it all worthwhile <laughs> um and then i also got another sock set you know, I love a sock set um, from Giddy Ants. And this one is a little one of a kind. 
and this is I hope it's a reading purple it's a really dark dark purple and there's some dark purple flecks in here too this is a little one of a kind they I don't think they'll do this again but gorgeous very Halloweeny I might do a little bit of color work with this maybe I don't want to do just a plain and I think the speckle is subtle enough that color work would work especially with such a contrast to the mini this is only a 50 gram one so Chloe's getting none of it sorry Chloe um but yeah what an adventure to get my little goodies well worth it I think <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. no more trips around uh strangers gardens for me that's my quota for the year I'm all done um but I did get some goodies for my birthday as well um and the first one is a sock set again although there's plenty of yarn here to knit something else um from botanical yarns this is there oh they don't have the name for it I think it's um is it Yorkshire Sunset maybe? Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I feel like I'm going to keep this until like spring because it is a very spring like colour. Look at this soft, soft peach. That's so nice. Oh, and the little blue I hadn't spotted either. Lovely, a little tiny speckle here. So she had a mini skein set as well, which is this, but deconstructed. But I like, I like this. I would get at least three pairs of socks out of this set. I reckon. I, well, I would get two full length pairs or I would get one full length pair and two shorties. For definite. So that was um, a little birthday present for me. And then another birthday present was from the editor-in-chief, Arneil. Um, obviously directed to the page by me. But this is a pixie yarn sock set in... Is it Hey Little Apple Blossom? Ooh, ooh. <gasps> Little Fade. Um, and I don't usually go for reds, but I have a brown, with, uh, like a brown waterproof coat and I wanted something to put in my waterproof coat that would kind of match that isn't pinky or purple. Um, I could do another spring sorrel with this, there's plenty here. Or, which was my plan, there's an Andrea Maury, um brio shawl. As if I don't knit enough Andrew Murray shawls. There's an Andrew Murray shawl, I can't remember what it is, but I will tell the editor and he'll be able to write it in here. Um, but it used five skeins and it wasn't a faded shawl, but I think it would be nice. And I think the DK weight of a shawl would be nice. So undecided as yet, might end up being a spring sorrel, but really how many sorrels do I need? it just makes me happy I've been looking at this is one that they've had for a long time maybe about two, two years and I've been looking at it because they also did a little sock set in it and I was tempted by the sock set but I don't think it was in stock anytime I went to look at it and then um I saw that um fade uh, I saw that shawl um pattern and thought that's what I want that's what I want so a little bit out of the wheelhouse but not too out still got our pinks in here um but yeah another little happy birthday to me and then i got um a twill and print um row counter but it's on a project bag that is not here i think it's in my what the feedback but i will show that next time but i also got uh from neil a little pin which she always gets from me it says yes I need all of this yarn and more which is very cute so that's going on my pin board don't you start growling hen I'm not finished yet and then so that was my birthday 
haul. And then I took myself off to Hank's yarn parlor because I needed to pick up some needles for my test knit. I forgot to say that um, I knit this on a three millimeter needle. Um, and maybe I can go down a size, go up a size for that one. That was on a three millimeter needle and I had to pick that up from Hank's. And like I said, I can't go into Hank's without grabbing some coat knits, sock, yeah, yarn. And I got this in DK so that I can knit my test knit socks in it as well. Um, it's much more flecked than it's showing here. It's actually kind of marled with a really dark navy, I want to say. Um, gorgeous, deep colour. This colour is, let me butcher the name, Dionysus. Dionysus. Right, Natalie, what kind of medievalist are you? Dionysus. Dionysus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, beautiful colour. Said beautiful again, but it really is gorgeous. So that is my, all of my acquisitions for the week. Um, nice, that's a yarn heavy week. Um, I'm going to try my best and be good. I do have um, an advent calendar coming from Pixie Yarn soon, which will be exciting. I haven't seen too many other autumnal yarns, but Giddy Ants are definitely delivering with these spooky ones. That one's very like a softer version of Winifred that they did a couple of years ago, which was very, I think that was based on Hocus Pocus. So anyway, those are my acquisitions. Now I'll go on to my knitting plants. So I, am, I have recorded every week so far. I'm not gonna be recording next week because next week is my best friend's hen party. So we're going away to um, this beautiful castle hotel, four star hotel place for the weekend. And um, hopefully it's not really a kind of go mad Hindu type of thing. It's more a bring your knitting, bring your books. Let's get comfy cozy, drink some Prosecco, but really just chill out. We've got spa, um, treatments planned, we've got afternoon tea planned, it's going to be a really nice relaxing weekend. So I need to bring some projects that are mindless so that I can obviously chat with everyone but still keep working on. So I'm not sure if that's going to be my feed or my um, album glow jumper or this one which has been on the back burner for a long time. I actually cast this on when I went to my little, we go to a little cottage that we love every couple of months or so. Um, this is in my Grocery Girls Hokey bag. It's the Pampa Bucket, I think, and it came out as an exclusive a long time ago. Look at their cute little logo. Adorable. Um, this is my Diaphanous Raglan by Jessie May Designs. Now, you might remember Jessie May does the um, Cozy Classic Raglan. I love her designs. She's really size inclusive. She is really um, aware of the financial restrictions that some people might be under. So she offers stage staggered discounts to her newsletter subscribers. So if you're interested in her patterns, definitely subscribe to her, new her newsletter. This is Daphnis Raglan. Let me be, lean back and show it. So I have a lot of it knit. Um, basically all I need to do is I've knit the body. Ends with some ribbon. I hope it's long enough. You know what I'm like, I don't knit jumpers long enough. Because I get bored and I'm going to have to pick them out and redo them. But hopefully this one is long enough. It's not supposed to be like full length comes up to about here so I all I have to do is pick up my stitches knit my little border here and then finish off my sleeves and I think the reason it stalled was I wasn't sure what sleeve I was going to do she's got at least four different sleeve options in this one pattern um 
So there is an option to just leave it like a slightly frilly little cap sleeve or the other sleeve I was considering was a kind of, what does she call it? It's not a bell sleeve because the bell sleeve goes out. Is it a bishop sleeve? It's the one where it goes in and it puffs here. So you decrease here and it goes kind of puffy. And I think I might do this because this jumper is too warm for the summer because it is fingering held double with mohair. But then I think if I don't do the full length sleeves, it'll be too cold for autumn and winter. So I'm leaning towards the full length sleeves. I should say this yarn is from Beehive Yarns. Um, let me find. I ordered three skins of the fingering and two skins of the mohair and they're all in her colorway too mm. and he said beautiful again and I caught myself too much too much beautiful but anyway um I have not you I have not broken into this skin yet this is how much I have left of the first mohair skin and I just have to do my sleeves and my um little ribbing cuff neckline type thing um yeah this is how much I have left so and I bought I don't think I overbought this I bought the recommended amount because obviously you don't want to you don't want to run out of yarn especially with a jumper like this it was all dyed in one batch and again really super service with beehive yarn so I ordered this it was all in stock on her website and she emailed me she actually wrote a little message to say that the mohair on her website was not from the same dye lot so she dyed it up separately for me so that I would have the same dye lot for my jumper and that way um the colors would blend which is incredible like the like Anytime I've had, like, it wasn't even that big of a delay. I didn't notice that it was delayed. But anytime there's been a little tiny, not even an issue, a snag in an order, indie dyers are so great at getting to you and saying, this is why this is happening, blah, blah, blah. They know that you're knitting a jumper. They know that it's tricky to match your colours and they just... I just find that really thoughtful and I really love supporting small businesses like that. So Beehive Yarns, I will link them below. This jumper is so soft and I don't have a mohair jumper. It knits so quickly. And like I say, I put it down because I hadn't made a decision on my sleeves. I do like the little cap sleeve, but I just think it'll be too, it won't be warm enough for winter. which is when I'll be wearing it. So I need to get this finished because it is the season to now start wearing it. And I wanna wear it, I wanna show it off. I really hope it's long enough. I think it will be. I think it's slightly longer than my sorrow. So, <laughs> see if I have to pull this out. I'm not gonna be happy with myself because I've already decided that I'm gonna pull out my soldatna and knit it longer because it's too short and I tried it on in the kind of outfit that I had planned for it and I don't like it it's too short it looks weird it's not hitting me at the right spot in my waist so lesson learned I'm going to pull that out but that's going to be a kind of I'm in a really good head there's a spider here why is there a spider here really really don't know what I was saying. <laughs> I was talking about my jumper. This is my jumper. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to knit this. It's time to wear it. Time to get it off the needles and then time to decide what I'm going to do with my leftovers. Um, oh yeah, I was talking about pulling out my soldatna. I'm going to pull out the soldatna but I have to wait until I'm in a good form and I'm not plagued by spiders before I do that. 
yeah, I need to be like it's just making me cross looking at it right now. So I need to be in a form where I'm like ready to just do it. I haven't decided whether I'm going to pull it right back to the pattern, the light blue section, and re-knit the pattern a wee bit more, or just pull back a couple of rows in the ribbing and extend the ribbing a bit longer. If I'm going to do it, I may as well do the whole hog and do the pattern because visually it'll still cut me off weirdly. If I'm going to do it, I may as well do it right. So that's on the horizon. Whether that happens or not is another thing. But my, this is a potential. I could finish this by the next time. I should finish it by the next one because I will have two weeks. So that is, um... An upcoming project, one more other upcoming project, which is exciting, is I have promised to knit my granny a jumper for her birthday. Now, I will not knit just anyone a jumper. Please don't put requests in because this is not going to happen. Um, the people I would knit a jumper for are my granny and my mum. And that's about it. Maybe Neil if he asked very nicely and bought the yarn. Maybe. But then there's the boyfriend curse. You know, do we want to push that? No, we don't. <laughs> um, so anyway, I took my grand. She actually requested a jumper for her birthday early in the year. And then I think she might have forgotten. And then she was taken into hospital for a little bit a couple of weeks ago. And I was sitting with her. And I just thought, I'm going to knit her a jumper. She wanted one. She'll wear it she'll like she's very knit worthy so i'm knitting gran a little jumper out of stash no less thank god um this is cascade yarns and i do not know what the color is because i don't put them on their thing the color is 5660 now they have proper names on the website but they don't put them on their labels so 5660 is what this is i'll look it up and stick it in my description box below my little show notes i should probably start a little ravelry ravelry page with some show notes shouldn't i we'll see we'll see how this goes but this is the color i'm going to do it in it's a kind of blue gray um so i showed her the yarn because i don't want to knit her a full sweater and then her not enjoy the color of it so I showed her the yarn anyway and she said it's definitely something that she would wear and um, this is Cascade Yarns Heritage. It's reasonably priced. I've knit a jumper in this before. It pills like crazy but then you have I have a depiller. The, the little electronic things that kind of go zzz, and that works a treat. It's very very soft. It pills a lot more than something like this. And I don't know, I don't know why. It must be a higher twist on, on the kind of indie dyed sock yarns. But anyway, I've got four skeins of this, which will be plenty to knit for my granny because her jumpers will be much smaller than mine. So I took her measurements the other day and I'm going to get that onto that. The jumper I'm going to knit for her is Jessie May's Cozy Classic Raglan Light, which is designed for fingering weight. I've already knit it. She likes the look of it. She wants just a simple jumper that's like knit to her measurements. So that's my plan for Vera. And I need to get on that because her birthday's on Christmas Eve. And that is creeping up on us. So that is all of my knitting. It's quite a lot, quite a lot of yarn this week as well. And some good plans. So, like I say, I'm not going to be here next week. I'm going to be away on a hen do. Um, so I will hopefully have a lot more knitting to show you next time. What was, what was I... Oh, I wanted to do a little recommendation. So I know that the ladies in um, Chronicles of Yarnia, in their podcast, they do a What's Happening Around Town little segment. And it's because their podcast is based on their yarn store. But I thought that was a good idea and I visited a little coffee shop that I've never visited before in Comber called Trait Coffee. 
And we've been meaning to go there for a long time. Neil is a real coffee nerd. He loves his coffee. And he has now turned me into a spoiled coffee nerd too because I never drank coffee before Neil. And then he introduced me to good coffee and now I only drink good coffee. So we went to Trait after our adventures in someone else's back garden and after visiting Giddy Ants and getting the goods, um, we went to Trait in Comber, which is a little coffee house. They do like two or three pastries a day, but it's very, very well done. And there's a pastry chef on site. Um, so I got a little pan au chocolat my French accent for you um, and a little coffee and it was just lovely it reminded me of there I'm going to sound very pretentious now but there was a little place in Copenhagen <laughs> when I went over for a conference there's a little patisserie called Lecker Bar and it's a tiny little shop and it was exactly not exactly but it was very similar to the vibe that Trade Coffee gave and there were lots and lots of regulars coming in um, and chatting away and everybody seemed to know everyone. It was just a really nice, really nice coffee shop. So we went there. I wanted to recommend it um, if you're ever in Northern Ireland. Um, and across the road there's another place called Indie Food, um, which is a kind of market that does only local products. So they have a huge, huge cheese counter, which is, which is what made my eyes light up. They also did gelato. That Neil loves but they had lots and lots of different um, chutneys and spice mixes and coffees and chocolates and patisserie and everything that you can imagine you might need from a food market in this little shop and it was lovely. They also did a lot of um, little things that would be good for gifts coming up to Christmas. Anyway my birthday's over now so we're in Christmas mode. <laughs> I won't mention it again for another couple of weeks. Let's get Halloween over first. Um, so yeah, those were two nice little places that we went to. Um, if Neil figures out how to put um, pictures on screen, I'll put a little picture on screen. If not, I will just look strange while I sit here. <laughs> um, but all their social medias and things will be tagged down below anyway. Um, so that's it from me for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Henry says hello. Well, she doesn't anymore because he's sneezing. But um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you in two weeks.